Mountain Engine. Sir Handel had had a bad day. The old coaches, Agnes, Ruth, Lucy, Jemima and Beatrice, had been awkward. They'd made him slip to a standstill twice. He was furious. Oh, those cattle trucks should be scrapped, he fumed. Scarlowy was shocked. I won't have it, he protested. Those old dears need kindness, not bad names. Exactly so, agreed Renius. He winked at Scarlowy. You be thankful, Sir Randall, that we're not a mountain railway. A oh, mountain railway? What's that? A railway which climbs mountains, of course. But it can't, said Sir Handel. Its engine's wheels would slip. But it can, said Renias firmly. We've heard of one quite near here. It can't. It can. A noisy argument started just as Donald chunted a flat truck to the siding nearby. On the truck was a queer-looking engine. He had six small wheels and a stovepipe chimney. His boiler was tilted downwards, and his cylinders were back to front. Whisht, whispered Donald hoarsely. Dinner wake the wee engine. It's tired he is. He's away back from England after being mended. You can know it is. We understand, but who is he? He's called Cull D, after the mountain his railway climbs. Well, did you ever, exclaimed the two old engines. They looked at Sir Handel and chuckled. I don't believe it, said Sir Handel. I can best ask him yourself. Then maybe you'll learn it's the truth I've been telling you. Donald puffed away, offended. Cull D woke to find the engines gazing at him. Where am I? he asked. They told him. That's good, he said. I'm nearly home now. Do you really climb mountains? asked Garlowey. I've done it for years. You must be clever. We couldn't. Our wheels would slip. I'm not really clever, laughed Caldy. I was just drawn like that. Like what? With pinion wheels on my driving axles. They have teeth, you see, which fit into a rack rail. I can't slip, however steep the line is. That, said Arrhenius, must help you going up. But if your line is so steep... Aren't you frightened coming down? Why? We have good brakes. Coaches, went on Renius, are sometimes silly and try to push us downhill. Some <coughs> engines uh, find it hard to stop them. Sir Handel blushed and looked at his buffers. Our coaches, answered Caldy, are never silly like that. They know such tricks are dangerous. I've never had that sort of accident. But, he went on thoughtfully, I was frightened once. Very frightened indeed. Please tell us, said all the engines. One day, long ago, before our line was opened, our drivers made all five of us engines stand ready outside our shed. The inspector's coming, they said. We don't know which of you he'll choose. He chose me, climbed into my cab, and made me push two coaches to the summit. So far, so good, he said. Now we'll test your brakes. So he went and stood on the steepest part of the line. Down, down it fell with a nasty curve below, edging a precipice. Brakes off, driver. Let him roll. Oh, gasped the little engine in horror. The coaches nudged me. We gathered speed downhill. I was terrified. My driver's hand stole to the brake. Hands off, ordered the inspector. Then I remembered. I had automatic brakes. I could put these on myself. Perhaps the inspector wanted to see if I could. They worked beautifully. Well done, Cull D, said the inspector. You'll do. I smiled, of course, but felt very shaky. My driver and farmer mopped their faces. They'd been nervous too. I'm never nervous now, finished Cull D. Why should I be? There's no need.